Geek Gamer Weekly is brought to you by Netflix Instant Streaming. Watch thousands of TV shows, episodes, movies, and more on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV absolutely instantly. All streamed to you by Netflix, saving you time, money, and hassle. For a free 30-day trial, please go to netflix.com slash geekgamer. This is Geek Gamer Weekly, episode 242, recorded on Sunday, July 28th, 2013, French Toast Sandwich. Hi everybody, welcome again to another edition of Geek Gamer Weekly. This is the Uber podcast for geeks and gamers. You're probably asking, weekly, huh? Well, it's been a couple weeks since you've done a show. Eh, whatever. No one watches, no one cares. It's all good in the hood. Anyway, uh, uh, I want to preface this right up front. You're, you're right over there, John. I just saw something that was... Something wrong? Yes. On your computer? Yes. Okay, let me continue. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. I want to preface this right up front that uh, you might hear some bad language on this show. I've decided... That, um, you know what, if, if an F word or an S word is appropriate, then you might hear one. So, uh, there is a clip, uh, coming up later in the show that does contain some strong language. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. So anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, this week we're going to be chatting about the latest of gaming and technology news. My name is Chase Nunes and joining me. As always, first here in the studio, you know him, you love him, Mr. Minecrafter extraordinaire, Joseph Mr. Falby. No, you, what? no, John Kessler. Huh? Hi, John. Hi. How are you? Just ducking. Very good. And um, what have you been doing all weekend? What, what, what have you been up to? I was doing my homework. What was your homework? Play Minecraft. Well, no one would know. If if someone was downloading the Geek Gamer Weekly show, they would not know because last week wasn't a Geek Gamer Weekly. Last week was a Minecraft Me, which I know could get quite confusing to people. Yeah. Because a lot of people think, John, that all we do here is just play Minecraft. Yeah. And we don't talk about games or anything else. No. I just crammed it all into, condensed it all into one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so now I don't have to play for another two weeks. Yeah, fair enough. Actually, uh, Jay Huckabee in the chat is asking, can they can people share, uh, share in the chat room? And I think the chat room has a sensor built in, I think. I want to say it may. So anyway, joining us as well from the Oregon Bureau of Technology, Gaming, Research, and Development, here he is, Mr. Joseph Falby. Hi, Joe. Hi. Sorry. It does say censored. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> it does censor the chat. Nice. So, Joe, uh, what'd you do this weekend? John played Minecraft all weekend. What did you? I uh, I, I built RC airplanes. Very cool. Yeah, oh, I, I, tried, I tried to get a hold of you, <laughs> and you were mm -hmm. uh, building planes. I was, I was, I was elbow deep in, in, uh, in uh, hot glue and uh, He homeboard. was passed out from sniffing the glue. Yeah. Well, hot glue doesn't have much of a scent to it, so it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to... Just got to get hot enough. Really? Uh, well, I mean, it was hot enough it was boiling as I was putting it down. I could see bubbles in it as it went down. Cool. What kind of planes but were I you... But I wasn't sniffing it. What kind of planes. planes were you building, Joe? <laughs> were you uh, so, um... Uh, uh, they also want to know how's that resource map. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to bring it back um, to Minecraft, because I remember that's very, all we do is Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it's it's a very very effectively ignored. Um, I I don't seem bitter, do and, I? Uh, I I, um, I hope I don't. Yeah, nobody nobody really knows or cares. Um, <laughs> remember, no one watches or <laughs> listens to the show anyway. Right. Yeah. No one cares. Uh, no. They, uh, so the the one that I that I have spent the most time on, but I haven't finished yet, is a twin engine. Um, big twin engine plane called the FT Cruiser, kind of a cool looking plane. And then I built uh, a couple smaller airplanes, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it's been good. Cool. It's been fun. Sweet. 
So well, I gotta, uh, I'm going to get the parts for my tricopter hopefully next week. Ooh. And so I'll be building a tricopter in the next couple of weeks. Cool. Well, looking forward to having you show that off on the show. Mm-hmm. You should uh, have a video clip or something to play. Yeah, maybe I'll try to do a video clip of it. I had a raffle copter, and then it crashed. That's it's fantastic, not John. Anymore. John, that's great. What? Don't. No? Just don't. Okay. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. First so, of all, pun jokes are not funny, and second of all, pun jokes from you are less funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was the... So, yeah. um... <laughs> that was the goal. <laughs> Come on. What? Uh, so... So this is the show that no one watches. This is the show that no one downloads. And that's fine. I've I've come to the realization after doing over 242 episodes of this show. I've come to the realization, John and mm-hmm. Joe, that uh, we are now just the Minecraft network. That people don't people don't realize that we play other games. Like I mean, I like Minecraft. I really do. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want to be pigeonholed. I like to, uh, I want to spread my wings and, and fly. There should be space for you to play um, Euro Truck Simulator. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and Grand Theft Auto and uh, Eve. Even Eve. Even Eve, John. Wow. And, I mean, and, and how about, how about, how about World of Warcraft? Yeah, that too. And uh, who's playing that? Sim City. And The Sims, and mm. whatever, and indie games, and indie games, games. like games like Fez. Fez, ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, they, 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 we got around to it. <laughs> yeah, why, it took why, a while. why don't you uh, lead off the the top story, Joe? Right. So, uh, people who haven't played Fez, Fez is an indie game came out. Of, I think a couple years ago now. Yeah, uh, it's actually kind of fun. Platformer, sort of a. A uh, 2D, 3D transitional game. You can rotate the playfield. Little. Uh, it actually kind of reminds me of Paper Mario, but more 3d paper mario goes flat so you see the edges of the paper when you turn it this game it it stays two-dimensional when you turn it so uh kind of a fun game has a lot of background backstory and a lot of content in there but you have to go and interpret it there's uh rosetta stone type blocks so you can figure out what the language and how the language works and anyway really really cool uh and a huge a lot of game there for an indie game and um, everybody was really looking forward to there being a Fez 2 so, because so, the first game was so cool. So, Joe, I, I, I want to stop you because I think there's yeah. a key part of this story uh, that we I, I want to discuss before you, you make okay. the announcement. The and, developer's a little unstable? Well, no, not, 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 <laughs> not that announcement. Um, oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> la- this past week, uh, Microsoft announced that the new Xbox One that all the Xbox One consoles will also essentially be development consoles, which is really capable cool. of being dev consoles, capable yeah. of being dev consoles, which is really nice. Uh, that will allow independent developers direct publishing straight from the console, and they, they they'll be able to publish on their own directly releasing on the Xbox One. This majority news has been very positive across the indie developer community. Now, Joe, I gotta ask you. They went around. They they obviously, uh, you know, uh, video game reporting companies, uh, news agencies. They went around. They they obviously went and talked with indie developers, and they said, "Hey, tell us, how do you feel about Microsoft making this move?" And Joe, they they went and talked to the makers of Fez, right? And they 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 talked to him about it. Right. Yeah. Well, they they talked to him about it. Um. And along with everybody else, yeah, and everybody had different reactions, yeah. Um, this but, these reactions were probably the most, would you say, colorful? He the developer Fez's was probably the most, yeah, colorful. Uh, I like that word. Yeah. Or or <laughs> yeah. or uh, uh, vibrant. Another good word is uh, unfiltered, audible. audible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good words here. Yeah. He, he, um, but basically he blew up he, over t- right. on yeah, Twitter. He, he ended up, he ended up going pretty much nuts, uh, after people talked to him about it. And, and so, we, well, we, we sort of have a video from the very beginning, right? Of well, the, the moment the, 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 he the goes, video, the video talks about it, but 
and, and we'll show that here in a minute. This uh, the, uh, this was a podcast from Game Trailers that we'll show here on the show. But basically, there was a Twitter uh, a Twitter blow up uh, over the sudden cancellation of Fez Two, and Fez Two was announced and was canceled because uh, Marcus Beer, who edit- he's an editorial writer under the name Annoyed Gamer on Game Trailers, and he he basically was really pissed off over the discussion that, well, yeah, I teased it enough. I think I teased it enough. Let me let me go ahead and set this up. I already set it up. I should just say. roll it. I, John, are you saying just roll it? Just roll it. Roll it. Roll I, it. I do have a topic, so I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any vitriol and vile and bile to? I, well, I have a little, spray on us today. I have a little something. I'm not spraying on you. I told you that costs extra. Um, so yeah, this week I'm Microsoft uh, and Microsoft are not the focus of my of my bitch and moan session. Um, but Microsoft announced on Wednesday after a story broke on Game Informer that they are indeed announcing, allowing self-publishing. Mm-hmm. I Xbox just said One, that. And it's going to cost like 100 bucks. And every Xbox One apparently is a dev unit, I'm hearing. You know, you can actually develop your games, which taps into some of the things that they did show us, um, that game creation unit that they've got, they've got uh, they showed at E3. Um, but of course, you know, the press wanting to get reactions, they went to a couple of indie developers. Uh, in this case, uh, Jonathan Blow and Phil Fish, because those guys are, you know, the self-styled kings of the on- indie genre. You know, they've been on Indie Game the movie, and, you know, they'll turn up and quote for anything and everyone. And Messrs. Fish and Blow, or Blowfish, as I'm going to call the two of them Ooh. right now, because um, while they may be moderately tasty, they're also kind of lethal, um, decided to go bananas and bitch and moan to Game Informer in particular uh, about, you know, how dare you? How dare you ask us questions about this story? I'm sick of you guys wanting my opinion on this story. And both of them, both bitching away. And I've just got a little message for the Blowfish. Um, Gents, you are the guys who did Indie Games the movie. And some of you looked relatively normal in it. One of you looked like a total toss pot in it. But you can't have it both ways. You're successful game designers. You're indie game designers hurrah good for you you fucking hipsters so let's get something out of the way if you are successful and you want people to promote your games and you go to the press and give them quotes for anything that uh, pertains to your shilling your next title when the press then come to you and say oh this is something that's pertinent to the indie scene let's talk to blowfish because blowfish are successful and they are you know supposedly these pioneers don't get fucking snicky about it, all right? Jesus, you should be grateful that these guys still consider what you say uh, something of use. Me, I think that both of you are a pair of toss pots. You may make good games. Well, Blow makes, you know, Braid's a good game. My, you know, Fez, I'm just not into it at all. Hey, but I th- I'm sorry, I'm, I like just not in- I'm not into it. Uh, I, but I also... you know, I respect people that do. I mean, okay. my, own, my own personal opinion, though, having seen these wankers over and over again, bitch and moan, Phil Fish in particular, he could just... He does come across as whiny. He, whiny? He's a fucking asshole most of the time. <laughs> and that's the thing. You know, I look, I'm an asshole, but I, that's what I am. That's what I do. I suck it up and suck up my head. Yeah, no. Uh, but that's Lost what I am. Mind. But what I'm saying is, if you guys want the promotion and then the next time round on your Fez 2 or, you know, uh, what's the what's the, the follow-up to Braid? The, wit, the Witless? Witless. Oh, jokes. Whoa, thank you very much. Yeah, so come on. Fair, fair. And actually, I would like to say to every outlet who got dismissed by Blowfish, fuck them. Next time they have a, something to shill, say, yeah, not so much interested. It is a two-way street. It's a symbiotic relationship. You guys are out there. You have to suck it up. Well, I would like a small counter argument. I do think like indie devs are still trying to figure out this space. You know, like I, I know when we had uh, Brandon Chung on years ago, he was like PR was the thing. Just getting messaging, getting stuff out there. These are really small teams sometimes. But fish. Yeah, oh no, these guys have had and, these guys uh, yeah. have had way more exposure. Um, I also don't think uh, Jonathan Blow is quite a hipster. He looks more like a professor who doesn't have tenure. But. <laughs> All right, um, well, I will redact his I, I will, I will say All right, so, the, the whole thing that's so they go on and, and, and they go and continue and they, and they talk about it. Uh, and before we break the news about what happened with Fez 2, I, I actually agree. I actually agree here that you can't have it both ways. I mean, if you want the, the uh, you know, the, the publicity, you want the positive news and aspects... <laughs> John, you're so distracting over there. <laughs> what? Um, sorry, you're eating my my ram over there. Um, 
do you well do you agree? I mean, with with uh with the you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? I mean, you if you yeah. have a game, you want promotion. And then when the press comes to you with a question, mm -hmm. you should, you know, be open, right? And talk to that them. That would be like us getting snippy because somebody wanted our thoughts on. Um, and then we, we didn't want to be noticed or, no, yeah. or taken seriously or whatever. No. No. Joe, uh, what, what do you think? I mean, I think we're all on the same page here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? The big console makers are, are the best ones to take, to take evidence from. And, and that whole... Um, that whole idea of no publicity or any publicity is good publicity, good or bad. There, there are people who are probably now hearing about Fez 2 and thinking, hey, I want to totally pick that up because it sounds like it could be interesting and doing some right. research into it. Uh, and, and they're going to find out something not terribly good. But, but yeah, if, if you're going out there, if you're an indie developer, if you're a small broadcaster, if you're whoever and you want recognition, you want publicity, you should be more than happy to give it to anybody who's coming to offer it. Yep. Uh, because, you know, you, you don't have Activision's $5 million advertising budget You don't have a huge for their marketing budget. No, you don't. No, you, right. you, yeah. you have, you know, your marketing right. budget is whatever you can talk somebody into covering. Yep. And if they're willing to cover it for free, yeah, that's a very good price. Yeah, you're right. Say. You're absolutely right. Um, so, so yeah, uh, having somebody come to you and say, hey, what do you think about this? And saying, I don't care what you think I think about this and <laughs> yeah. you should buzz off and, yeah. and all of you guys are stupid and I hate this whole yep. industry and everything is retarded and, and I quit is sort of, um, that's a little beyond a negative attitude about the whole thing, isn't it? Well, not only that, but it, it, went, it went even beyond that. So this, this is crazy. So after the big blow up over Twitter, that happened between uh, between Mr. Fish. <laughs> I can't Mr. believe Fish it. And Marcus Beer. And, and Marcus yeah. Beer. Fez 2 is now canceled. Just yeah. straight up canceled. And this he, is directly... He, he announced it on Twitter. He and, announced it on and Twitter. people have been looking forward to it. And it, yep. I'm sure it was fairly far into development. It was yep. going to come out for PC. And not consoles, though, because he couldn't, he couldn't get into that developer area. Yeah. But... Potentially, I mean, right? That was why they were going to him. Is yeah. he said he couldn't support Xbox because it was too expensive to develop for the Xbox 360. Well, with the Xbox One, I guess, um, it now suddenly becomes easy. Yeah, it's bucks, easier. Just yeah, like absolutely. developing for iOS. Yeah. So, um, so you know, it makes sense to go to him and say, "Hey, so earlier you said you wouldn't develop for consoles, but now it's only a hundred bucks. So why are you going to yeah, do?" It? Yeah. He says, "No, forget it. I quit the whole thing. It's done. Fez is canceled. I'm out of here. Jay Huckabee. I'm done with gaming. It's all stupid, and I leave." Jay Huckabee says it perfectly uh, in the chat room. He says he uh, he rage quit the industry, which is absolutely right. Uh, here is the direct post from uh, PolytronCorporation.com's website from Fish himself. He says, "Quote: Fez two is canceled." I am done. I take the money and I run. This is as much stomach as much as I can stomach. This isn't the result of any one thing, but the end of a long, bloody campaign. You win. And then there was one as of this recording, there are one thousand fifty responses <laughs> with is this yeah. a joke? Is this is this crazy? Uh this is, I mean, it's one of those things like people are just like, what the, are, what the hell? Are you serious? <sighs> yeah. Which we obviously, maybe there's other things going on here. Uh, obviously there is. <laughs> so we, we don't know, but, uh, and this, this put him well, over it, the top. And it, it has been said that, so, that Fish, know. Phil Fish, the guy who, who did the development on Fish and, or on Fez and was working on Fez too. Is known to be a little on the unstable side, so maybe it it is just sort of culminating in this. But it it really does seem kind of wrong for him to react this way to it, unless there is a whole lot going on behind the scenes. Maybe right. maybe the reporter who came to him, maybe the reporter who came to him was like totally negative and said, "Well, we know Fez sucks, and Fez Two is going to be even worse." But what do you think about this there, whole thing about the Xbox? There has to be there has to be something going on. There has to be right. Uh -huh. Because Hopefully. who would who would who would take a game that no doubt is going to be successful? Okay, it's like saying Chase and Joe. All right, you guys are going to do a show about Eve. Okay, 
we got a player on your team that knows everything there is to know about Eve. He plays it all the time. Yeah. And and not only that, not only that, but we have a a, 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 a production house and a distribution house all ready to go. You're going to be very to successful. Push this out to the be mass, very successful. It's be huge. And, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then say, um, I'm done. Get... I'm done. And then, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're done. We're done. No. I don't want to hear that. I quit. No. Yeah. You, you know, you know who else is rage quitting? Segway. Is <laughs> the 7.7, 7, 700,000 players in the last three months have left World of Warcraft. Hello, Jace Rossi. This is for you, buddy. He's not one of them. I know he's still playing. Uh, but 7.7. <gasps> 7, million subscribers now that number has dropped down to uh obviously they have been expecting to be losing players uh they're saying that they attribute it a lot of it to eastern markets but they haven't said why by the way in case you didn't know there is a movie coming out soon a world of warcraft movie did you know that there was a movie coming out john no 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 do you care do you care no Hey, come on! It's, it's, we it's, it's, what, is it, it going to have pandas in it? Yes, John. It will. It will have. Uh, well, there was already a movie done like that. It's called Kung Fu Panda. Uh, Duh. Oh man! Sorry, John. Yes, yeah. stop. It is interesting yeah. to note that seven point seven million people for for World of Warcraft seems see you know right. They're saying it's really low and it's <laughs> vastly declining. <laughs> yeah, that is. More than the the population of the entire I, state of I, Washington. <laughs> I I, I want to know what I, I would love to know how much how much does it cost them to run their servers on a monthly basis, and I, I, obviously how much money they're basically printing on a monthly basis. Well, well so I mean, if, if you, you know, figure if you figure all of those people, even if you figure all those people are on yearly subscriptions, where I think it comes down to like ten dollars a month, that's still seventy seven million dollars per month. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. So what you're saying, so Joe, is even they're if their server hurting. backend costs them, let's say, twenty million dollars a month to maintain, which is a really high estimate, I would imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's still a pretty good moneymaker. Yeah, they're not hurting. That's what you're saying. No, no, they're, they're not hurting. I think they're doing okay. Yeah. yeah. Even if they're folding back. Let's put another twenty million into development every month. They're folding twenty million dollars back. They're still clearing what thirty million? Yeah, seven million dollars a month. Yeah, they're they're printing. I think they're doing. They're okay. printing. Fun- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let let's let's move gears here and let's chat. Uh, we we haven't chatted about them in a while. You, you know, they used to be a recurring topic. They meaning the company called. Google. I don't know if you heard. They are a search engine. <gasps> yeah. And, whoa, 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 whoa. What and, about Alta Vista? Uh, they don't exist anymore. Uh, Dogpile. Do they exist? Web crawler. Do they exist? Um, I I don't know. I don't Something know. ferret. I know Yahoo's still out there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, Something ferret? ferret. Yeah. I'm gonna upgrade my web browser to uh, NCSA Mosaic. There you go. <laughs> Wow. Anyway, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, Google unveiled something called Chromecast. Now, a few people already have this already. It's $35. It's a little HDMI dongle that uh, plugs into your TV. Guess what? Through the HDMI port. And it it allows you to stream basically whatever is on your Android phone or laptop if you're running Chrome browser. And you can project it onto the screen. Now, I don't have one on order because they're back ordered right now. Some of my technology and podcasting friends got this. And uh, for the most part, some people are saying it's really happy and nice and it's really cool. Now, here's the uh, the one thing that this picture doesn't show. Yes, it is wireless. It does connect wirelessly. But this picture does not show the power wire that has to be plugged into it. And it does need a power cube. So it is not powered by the... Uh, HDMI port. So it almost looks mm. nice and clean and neat and cool. Uh but I but what I equate this to, Joe, and I think you might appreciate this more than John, because John probably won't have any idea what I'm gonna talk about here. Uh, but I equate this to uh airplay, 
really like an Apple TV kind of a device that allow that allows Android users to basically stream what's on their laptop or their phone directly to the TV. And yeah, I think that's what it's it's really yeah, going against. It is, yeah. And and it's interesting they're doing that because um, I I don't know if I mentioned this before, but but we're we're becoming a Citrix house at work, and um, when they did their big keynote thing uh, for Synergy, their big conference yearly conference, most of their demos they did on iOS devices because they couldn't get a reliable video out from their Android devices, their tablets and their phones that they were trying to demo. So when they did an Android device demo, they would have or a Windows phone for that matter, they would do an over the shoulder camera shot. And when they had an iOS device, they would just put it up on the presentation because they had an Apple TV in the back that they would just stream the video using AirPlay straight through. So I imagine that along with all the other places where AirPlay becomes really useful, not just in a personal environment, in a corporate environment. I've seen um, a push for uh, there. There's actually a mode in iOS seven on the new on the Apple TV for a boardroom system where you just have an Apple TV set up on a wireless network and anybody who walks into it using their iPhone can push their content from their iPad or their iPhone to that Apple yeah, TV yeah. and put it up on the projector. Yeah, we actually... So it's a, it's a really cool, cool system. Yeah, we actually used that at my old job at Smilebox where developers, when they're showing off builds to the team, mm-hmm. uh, we just had a, an Apple TV and they would just walk up with their yeah. iPad or they walk up with their iPhone. Mm-hmm. Now, Jay, Jay Huckabee yeah. in, our, in our chat room put, brings up a very good point is that the Chromecast doesn't quite work like AirPlay. Right now, you're just sending a URL, and then it <coughs> pop it up on the screen, essentially, like a web page. I, right. I, I bet they, you that it eventually will have that capability. Well, they, it will happen. I believe they, they showed on the... Because they also, at the same time, they announced the next version of Android. Um, 4.3? Uh, French Toast Sandwich or something. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> French Toast Sandwich. <laughs> Tur- and it's it, now it I'm hungry. A, I am hungry. <laughs> I want to eat. And it, it had an extra little uh, little option that was for pushing video out to a Chromecast or some kind of device like this. So I, I, I as, at least as I recall, it did. Maybe that was just specific to an app. But right. But yeah, it's the same sort of idea, and and I think that's the direction they're trying to go with it. Uh, well, I mean, we'll have to see how well it works. Um, you know, from getting reports back from people on how well that works. But yeah, AirPlay is uh, is a really cool tech. Um, for those who've never used it, it's really, really, actually, really good. Really works really well. Yeah, and it, it would make sense for Google to go after it because it is one feature that iOS very clearly has that that Android just can't match. Now, uh, John, uh, you're you're an Android user, mm-hmm. uh, no doubt. You saw this an, this announcement and the next one that I'm going to talk about here shortly. Uh, but I saw it, but I hadn't really paid attention. So to it. I mean. Um, so not only during this announcement they announced the Chromecast, but they also announced the new Nexus Seven mm-hmm. with uh, the HD screen, a little bit more higher cost price point, but it does have a rear facing camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the the base level I think is like two thirty, uh, so it's up a little bit yeah. higher than the original one, but mm-hmm. you do get a higher res screen and a rear facing camera. Uh, did you see those announcements at all? I actually I glossed over the uh, dongle part of it, and I just I read more on the. Uh... All right. Well, let's Nexus. let's well well let's uh, let's get off the dongle. Sorry for the puns, everybody. The the Chromecast. Yeah, Chromecast dongle. Yeah. Um, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, Nexus Seven is landed in the Google Store. Some uh, podcasters have received theirs. They got review units. I did not. I do not have a review unit. I don't know how people get on the Google review unit list. I I don't know how you do that. Is this Rowan Atkins. Uh... That is not Rowan Atkins. It's, it's his cousin. That is his cousin, John Atkinson. Uh, so uh, you you read into it. So can you talk about it? Do you know what to, what to say about it? It costs a little bit more. It costs a little bit more. It's in two different <laughs> versions, 16 gigs or 32, 32 gigs. Yes. There's also an LTE version available as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is available in the Google Play Store. You can pre-order. Uh, now, what's so interesting is they weren't supposed to be on sale until July 30th. So a couple days from now, but they went ahead and just start selling selling them anyway. Uh, Best Buy, Amazon, GameStop, Walmart—they've already started selling um, pre-sales. Pre-sales. They don't have any in hand. Well, no. Some people have picked them up. People. Oh. Some people have them in hand. Hmm. Facts. I, I I'm having the hardest time with their website on this thing. It just does not. Yeah. Well, it, I understand what they're doing, but it's it's too Web <laughs> 
John, it's have you, just frustrating to browse through it. And so, John Atkinson, I got to ask anyway. you: Did you pre-order? No. 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 Why not? Because. Are, are uh, you? Did you know about it up until today? Uh, the pre-order? No. Are you going to get no, one? Did you know about the Nexus Seven up until yes, this I did. particular phone? Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Actually, well, I had maybe I I, gl- I just kind of glanced over the article real quick. I had like five. I, I had five minutes during lunch that I could actually on. I think it was Friday, so, so, Thursday or Friday that I. So for some at interesting it. stats for people who want to know, uh, it comes preloaded with Jelly Bean. That's what it's called, Joe. Jelly Bean four dot three Android, two hundred twenty nine dollars. You'll get nine hours of HD video playback, ten hours of web web browsing or reading, like John likes to do. The display is a nineteen twenty by twelve hundred HD display. 2.3 million pixels and 323 PPI. That's Retina-ish. Each device comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 quad-core processor and two gigabytes of RAM. John really wants one. Mm-hmm. And if you do want the 4G LTE version, you can pick from AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And and it'll take a little while. Yeah. The 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 LTE the the 3G version the LTE version isn't shipping for another two through several weeks anyway. Yeah. yeah. So if you want Wi-Fi only, you can get it right away. Yeah. So there you go. I I'm actually. Uh, oh, the one thing that it. you didn't you didn't talk about that it does have is it has uh built-in inductive charging. Oh, that's right, and the rear-facing yeah. camera that's, that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Why? Well, I, well yeah. On. Some I, people like to take pictures on the go with their tablets and hold them up in public and uh, be all cool like that you know it's all cool yeah. and hip with the kids the only reason to do it with an ipad is yeah. because you can get iMovie on it and so you can edit it and then put it on youtube right from one device i don't think you have some of the same capabilities no. on the nexus 7 yeah but yeah it has a camera Woo. uh it, it also of course does have the standard G- gps gyroscope accelerometer compass and an ambient light sensor but those are pretty much standard. Everybody's tablet has that now. All right. I got to ask the next question here as we move move on. Who yep. here, Joe, John? Yes. Joe, John. What? What's the story about in vitro beef, the meat of the future? My wife actually showed me. <laughs> she showed me this story at the ball game yeah. today. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. So explain this. Who Who put this in there? Okay, uh, well, I added it. Okay. Uh, I thought it was kind of an interesting story. So everybody right. out there who's a vegetarian because they can't stand the idea of, a, of a, a wonderful, beautiful cow growing up just for the purpose of being shot in the head and eaten, yes. um, A, doesn't understand how the food chain works, and B, here's your solution. Uh, so they've, they've actually managed to, and, and people have been talking about it for years, for decades, grow beef in a laboratory. So this this was what? never attached to a cow. What? This was beef that was grown in a petri dish or something, you know, something like that anyway. Okay. And um and they they finally reached the, they've been trying for years. They finally reached the point where they're actually going to serve it to real live humans. All right. And uh, and see how they react. The and I think it's really cool because if you're, you know, if you're one of those people who just hates this idea of, you know, cows dying for your meal or anything dying for your meal. I right. Uh, except for you people who think, ooh, red beef, I will not eat red beef, but I'll eat fish because somehow fish dying is better than cows, whatever. Um, this is a solution for you. The The downside, it is slightly more expensive right now. How much, Joe? Uh, How much is it? Around 250,000 UK pounds per patty. <laughs> so it's who's like paying a- these scientists to do this kind of thing because <laughs> i really want that job hey they had to get their well, funding somehow <laughs> yeah someone's paying a, them off it's it's for the five ounce burger so it's not even a very big burger but 250 uk pounds it would come out to what about oh, a little less than four hundred thousand dollars for for a five ounce patty oh the horror oh my goodness <laughs> But uh, but I, I mean, the, the promise of this is in the future, we will be able to have meats without the animals associated with those meats. So instead of having a cow wandering around waiting to get shot in the head and turned into beef, we would just have beef growing on like well, yeah, a pan. Can, can, I was going to say chem farms, chemical farms. Chem trails. Yeah. Yeah, chem trail. Huh? 
I don't know. I don't really understand vegetarians. I'm 100. I would never meat, pay that much so. for a burger, even if it was the best tasting <laughs> burger in the world. I just wouldn't do it. I don't, I don't think anybody would. Uh, the the point is that's how much it costs to develop this. They're not gonna the people who are eating it are not gonna be charged that much money for it. They've already been charged their taxes in the UK, which is probably where this money came from. Nice. <laughs> so why were they funding this? Well, they could have funded more episodes a year of Top Gear. I have no idea. But well, doesn't the is. isn't the I mean I I think <laughs> weren't you the one who told me this, Joe, that the budget of Top Gear. Oh yeah, it's the more... single highest cost show on the on so, the BBC. So you have you have the budget of Top Gear. Okay, say this is the budget of Top Gear, mm -hmm. and then right next to it is the budget of all the other shows the BBC does combined. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Especially <laughs> when they can make a Ford Transit hovercraft. I mean, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> That's a lot of money. But yeah. Well, it is the most popular driving show, car right. show on the planet. And 35% of that budget goes into... Insurance. Yeah, 35% <laughs> insurance, 65% <laughs> content. All right, John put, awesome. I think John put this story, and it's conveniently from the BBC. BBC. Yeah. Vivendi sells stake in Call of Duty firm Activision Blizzard. So Vivendi is getting out. They're getting rid of their stakes. They're, Vivendi is selling 85% of its, six, do the math, kids. They're selling 85% of its 61% stake in Activision to the company and its management for a cool $8.2 billion or 5.3 billion pounds. So Activision cough, coughed up $8.2 $8 billion. Yeah, $8.2. Yeah, yeah. no. what, what I don't understand is, okay, you're a subsidy of a bigger company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have $8.2 billion somewhere. Okay. How is that eight point two billion dollars yours, and not yeah. at least some percentage of it the Theirs. bigger companies? <laughs> and and the bigger the bigger companies I, going, we're not making enough money, I, I just so we're going to sell you I'm off just, to yourself. Yeah, I I don't understand. I mean, I understand spinning them off, but I I I, I don't that that part of it. I, I don't understand. I I was given an offer for Geek Gamer TV the other day for about a thousand. I was strongly considering it. That was easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Wow. Did I just kill that or what? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Like, so wow. the, the the big piece of news is Vendi will no longer have control over Activision. So they will be able to make terrible decisions like continuing the Call of Duty franchise and continuing to print money with World of Warcraft all by themselves. All right. <laughs> Now, uh, before I move on to the very next story, I want to remind every story. Well, there is another story here. I want to get oh, it into. Holy smokes. Is it really? really? Yeah. Now, this is it, story is it something cool. Well, hold on. <laughs> now, I, I want to warn everybody that the learning curve for the next story might be oh, a geez. little too high. So, to break it down for us here is Mr. John do, do you have Kessler. A picture of what the estimated learning curve is. No, but I, I, I know I could get it really easy. Um, huh. But, John, why don't you tell everybody how significant is the largest space battle in history in a video game, what it's all about, in a layman's term. Now, I'm going to stress this, John. Layman's terms here, everyday words for normal common folk like me. How significant is this? Because 2,900 ships got together in a game called Eve. No, 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 no. no, no. no? 2,900 ships were lost. Lost. Yes. Okay. No, 4,000 people. Oh, okay. See, see like I said, I didn't understand. Yes. Uh, so anyway, well, explain what happened here. What's going on, John? John, this, it, this, is, this is perfect for you. So please tell me. Tell it. me. It's freaking awesome. Oh, except for. What's I was, awesome about this? Tell me. I don't convince know. me. I don't know. I actually, you know, you guys told me about it because I was playing this other game today, and don't talk about that. Let's yeah. go back to Eve right now. Don't oh, oh. don't distract the situation okay. here. Don't distract John. No, actually, you get know, back to the story. Yeah, I, I am actually pretty bummed that I didn't <laughs> find out about this. I would have watched it on on Twitch. Um, you don't watch our stuff, but you would watch this. this. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah well, th it happened this weekend. Come on. Um, I mean, you guys, when you're doing 
the other show, I'm at work. Um, How does Eve, I mean, Jay oh. Huckabee in the chat brings up a great point. Uh -huh. How does Eve even do this? Everybody's in the same server. There's one server. There's nothing shared. Everybody's well, well, no, together. No, no, no. It's, it's, a, no, it's, it's a cluster of servers. Okay. But it is, it's I nodes. mean, it's a cluster of servers, but it is one universe they're all in. Yeah. 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 No, but actually, no. When they, when they are, they act. Um, they dedicate nodes on their on, on on the blade servers for this. So everybody technically is on the same node during that. But they said they're they're actually running time dilation where they slowed it down. He said yeah. up to ten percent. John, of real John, time. you're losing me. John, yes, you're losing me here. No, you can't be. I I, I don't well, know. It, what, it, I don't know what you just said. But Joe does. Well, okay, so well, that's great. Yeah, Joe's a network <laughs> administrator. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is this is about the game. This isn't about the network. Oh, okay. I understood what Blade Server meant. That might have been where you got yeah. confused. Um, but uh, but no, <laughs> they they have a time dilation thing where it, as the server gets overloaded or as the node that people are playing on gets overloaded, they start slowing down time on in that section of the universe so that their server can keep up. Um, doesn't have anything to do with the guy from South Park, but no, they 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 did. Uh, it does say. Um, Eve's developers will likely slow down time more than 90% so its server can process all player actions. That means today's battle could actually take several hours to reach the exclu its explosive, explosive conclusion. Yes, they said uh, actually there was five, I, from what I was I read in the thing, they said it was uh, up to about five hours. So I'm looking at a picture here, John. This uh -huh. is a picture from the battle. Yes. No doubt. I, I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so... Um, but... Well, but why would anybody get involved in this? This is four thousand players. I mean, what the hell is going on here? Because it's epic. I mean, what? Other, okay, what other game? Well, no, no, I shouldn't no, no, say don't, that. You're changing okay. the conversation. What? I don't care about any other game. Talk to me about Eve for a moment here. What is going on? What is going on? Tell me why. I mean, I I'm trying to. I'm trying. Well, you have the two biggest. Bullies in the game. Okay. Okay. Good. This is a good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, so you, you have you, two okay. two big okay. factions. Yeah. Okay. Test Alliance, which actually came out of Reddit. Okay. All right. So and then um, CFC. Uh, uh, well, actually, no. You got okay. CF. Okay. Test Alliance is basically an alliance. All right. Right. Goon Swarm is an alliance. They okay. are out of something awful. That's actually where they're they're something awful forums. Yes. Okay. All right. Um. Following. The, the I'm following. C, okay. Now I'm gonna. Okay. And because we're, we're already, you haven't got, lost me yet. I'm, we're, we're, I'm, more, I'm I mean, right with we've you. already have our explicit tags for the show. CFC is Clusterfuck Coalition. Okay, that's what that's CFC stands for. Okay, okay. So they're okay. a coalition of alliances. Okay, got it. Um, right. so they, you know, they've been and actually in and test and when it's when it's when it was teething, um, was a little toady for uh, Goon Swarm. Okay, all right. And then you know they they grew up, threw off their shackles, and been you know. Playing with the big boys. Uh huh. Okay. Probably one of the biggest groups. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. And what do you I'm taking. I'm taking notes here. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, no. Please continue. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm taking notes. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. so uh, and and things have been coming ahead. You know they've um, right. uh -huh. you know the CCP. CCP. I, I I am really freaking tired. So it's yeah um, yeah yeah. I yeah. actually I, had to I, think I'm, about it. I'm tired too. Yeah. Uh huh. Not CCCP, that's no, that's no, no. the old Russia. Yeah, no, that's uh, CCP. CC, CCP. Yeah. Okay. Um, Carbon copy. It's it's also not OCP. No. For, for those who are paying attention. Yeah. Uh, that's that's RoboCop. That's that's that was on yeah. filter. That was yeah. last week. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, got it. You know they, they they've been you know working on this the server stuff. So you know they they actually you know cause, and they generally know you know they they actually have kind of an agreement that say hey you know, when you guys are gonna be doing the big fights John, let John, us know John what. I, I'm lost now. No, you're not. I just you 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 stopped. You you purposely threw on the brakes before it even went. See, see, I I I've just lost it. I've just <laughs> see. Look, I I I've lost it. Now, if 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 I can understand it, anybody can understand. It. Really, it it actually really? isn't isn't that complicated. What's happening here, Chase? What what? It's just like any other battle that happens, whether it's in real life or not. They these two groups have basically agreed they were gonna they were gonna do this big epic battle. Yeah. And they picked the time and they picked the location. And um they both met up and brought big chunks of their fleet with them. 
and and really the rundown of this story is is about how the battle unfolded and and how things happened. So like one of the examples is um at 4:49 Eastern, the battle is go- is raging on slowly. Some of some tactics have been have emerged. The Test Alliance is attempting to jam CFC's targeting capabilities in order to cripple CFC's logistics, which is its ability to heal friendly units. So, in other words, they they started doing things that would try to cripple the other fleet so the other fleet couldn't heal their own ships or couldn't repair their own yeah. ships. So it makes sense. I mean, well, right, that's exactly what you try to do in a main battle. And and it goes on to talk about different things. It ended up five hours later, over 2,900 ships are destroyed. And um, uh, should we should we give out the spot? I guess we can because the only way people are going to know is if they read it. Um, and CFC actually defeated the Test Alliance. Uh, and um, <laughs> it was the largest fleet battle in EVE Online's history. And Test Alliance intended to make a de- definitive statement in 6VDT, but their defeat at the hands of CSC will no doubt prolong EVE's war of the moment. Yeah. So these are two groups, these two alliances that have been going after each other for a while and have, have probably mostly posturing. Yeah. Uh, and saying, we can kick your ass any time. And the other team saying, no, you can't. We can kick your ass. And, and now, yeah. at least at this moment, they've proven that uh, CFC will come out on top. How long that'll last? If, if mm. you know, CFC will, will, uh, will, you know, fall back yeah. on their laurels and test will be will build up again. And maybe in another year, we'll see another big battle like this between these two groups and, and the outcome could be different. But yeah. that's what this is. It's just like a battle in anything else. It's it's two groups, big groups getting together. The difference, the reason why this is significant is just because of the scope. Four to five thousand people in one system at the same time, all basically shooting at each other, yeah. is is pretty amazing. No matter no matter what game you're talking about, no matter what you're what what you're looking at, right? Because and they said you know that that topped. Um, said you know it, the the system at they said at that one point was four thousand seventy pilots. In, in the system it, yeah. it topped the old record and the old record isn't even a year old yet is it was at 3,615 yeah. um you know and 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 some of that you know and that's a tribute to <clears throat> um you know ccp trying to you know pro, you know provide the ability to be, be able to do that yeah like you said and, you and know, Chase, ccp has a history of reacting to what their gamers actually do and what they want so mm-hmm. In a positive way, yeah. um, and actually listening to them. Remember, there was a council a while ago of the leaders of the top uh, corporations that could all talk directly to CCP developers and representatives well, about where they wanted the game to go. It didn't mean that was where it went, yeah. but they at least had some influence yeah. in the system, which is what more than yeah. most gamers have in the games they play. Well, actually, that that count, council thing, that, that's actually people, it, there's actually an election in, in game mm-hmm. for those people. That those they're yeah. they're not just the you know line, top you know leaders and stuff. Um, anybody, you know, is basically you know almost, that one's almost just a pop. I hate to say it, almost you know some of it's a popularity contest. Um, but you know they are they are actually guaranteed seats and um the ability to go to uh, CCP headquarters like two or three you know almost quarterly to sit yeah. d- sit down and have a greet with them. But like you said, and have access you know to the depth you know some of the. You know some of the community people there, um, which is kind of cool. Like I said, you know it, it is. You know, and then like I said, that whole that whole thing's voted on by the players. Yeah. So, um, and one of the I love one of the comments on here is today's conflict may look like a spreadsheet battle to those seeing Eve online for the first time, but it's serious business for those involved. Which made me think, made me wonder. I wonder what percentage of players on Eve are CPAs. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. So yes, anyway, John, giant ahead. battle in Eve somewhere in cyberspace. Got it. Yeah, got it. I, 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 so, I, I finished up my. Notes. I mean, any any battle has, or I mean, any 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 team. You go, you know, a game, any game. Yeah, I mean, football has a set amount of people. Yeah, I know. This one's just flexible. Understood. It's basically, and much bigger than the average football team. Yes. Well, that's going to wrap things up. We're out of time. Yep. Sorry. That's all right. Well, the the, the, the Eve, Eve, yeah. I see. I can't even think straight now. Yeah. Um, well, if if we, I guess we'll have to wait for next week. Maybe I'll I'll try to do a full review of this. The L cap. The no the the leap. I know for some reason the E the <laughs> the the um the the there's an there's supposed to be an E but it's in green letters. It doesn't come across. I don't know why. It's not very bright. It's the yeah, leap. The leap leap motion. Uh, leapmotion.com. It's kind of a cool 
they they say it's like a like a um you put it under your monitor and then you, you move around above it and it detects your motions. Ooh. So it's sort of like um like a less obtrusive so, uh, so version it's a, of the uh, it's a Wii for your p- your computer screen. No, because you don't have any other controller, so it's more like. But you uh, are the control. Oh, it's what the. Is, uh, what is that that spy thing Connect. from Microsoft? Connect. Um, that yeah, it's Connect. like a less obtrusive version of the Connect. Um, is, is sort of what it what it's billed as, but Got it's it. it's kind of a cool little device, and uh, I've I've just been playing with it for a couple hours. I haven't really had a whole lot of time yet. So. Um, I, I want to, uh, even though we don't have our picks of the week uh, this week, uh, there's one thing I do want to uh, talk to you guys about real quick, and that is uh, Geek Gamer TV is trying to raise money on Indiegogo to send the entire uh, cast and crew of Geek Gamer TV, the whole network, which is myself, me too, John Kessler, Joe Falby, and Cameron Atchley, and we're hoping to raise enough money to head to Minecon 2013 in Orlando, Florida. Uh, there's been some recent developments that uh, they're supposedly going to be releasing tickets and batches sometime this week. Uh, so I'll be at the ready to pull the trigger on those. But in the meantime, because we have to, I mean, we have to plan for success here and we cannot let the tickets get sold out in the meantime. So what we need from you guys is some help. And uh, this next weekend coming up, uh, I want to say the first weekend of August, I want to have a big fundraising push. Uh, so I would be really pushing the the the, the media, uh, not the media, the the social media, strong. But if you want to get involved and you want to help us out, because obviously we are, uh, I mean we're not nonprofit, but we don't make a profit. We, you know, we're I'm I'm so far in red and and all them, yeah. I don't want to go there. So anyway, if you want to be a part of things, uh, you can head over to our lovely Indiegogo page right here. You can go to ggtv.me slash minecon or the best best way uh, you can you can do is go to uh, geekgamer.tv and uh, when you come to the website here on the right hand side there you'll see the big uh, widget here for for minecon for the indiegogo project right now as of the recording we are at 624 dollars so we are 12 percent of the way there so, uh, we'd love your assistance. Uh, head over to our website, geekgamer.tv, right hand side, Minecon 2013. Now, if you don't, if you're one of those guys, and I know a few of you out there are, who want to contribute and support the network, but don't want to be tracked in any way, you want your donation to remain anonymous. Well, guess what? We now have a way of doing that through Bitcoin. So, if you head over to the donate and support section of geekgamer.tv. Uh, there uh, at the bottom, you can donate using Bitcoin. You just click that button, a uh, little JavaScript runs, and then bam, right there, you can go ahead and use the interface and send some Bitcoin our direction. And uh, it's completely anonymous. That's one of the, the beneficial things that people like about Bitcoin. So if you ever thought about doing that, you can go ahead and contribute that way. John Kessler, you're not on Twitter, you're not on Facebook, you're not at any social media, but you are faked at VW Kenny. I am. You are. That was easy. Really? Yeah, you're faked there. It's a fake. It's real. It's a fake. (laughs) Joe Falby Uh, hasn't tweeted lately, but when he does, you want to follow him because it's special. At Falby, F-A-L-B-E-Y. Special. Joe, people should follow you. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, you, you might it's take not like them. I'm going to inundate them with tweets. No, make you maybe they're w- never going to find out what sandwich I ate for lunch. Nope, nope. nope. It's going to be it, you know the, it's going to be so embedded in their follow feed they're going to have to set they a probably reminder. Won't even see it. They yeah, won't they even see it. Even you're see you're it. absolutely yeah, right. Just go right by. A warning alarm will go off. Yeah, that Joe t- actually yeah. tweeted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you guys want, you can follow me on Twitter. I do tweet a lot at Nunes N U N E S. And by the way, if you were following me today, an interesting thing happened to me at the ball game. So at the seventh inning stretch, uh, right after they finished uh, take me out to the ball game, in two different sections in the upper section, in the 300 level, uh, someone, $1 bills, sprinkled them all over the crowd. Probably $1,000 worth. I mean, it just was like everywhere, like a ticker tape parade. Wow. And on each mm-hmm. $1 bill was a website, was an advertisement for a website. And then hmm. shortly after that, some of those dollar bills fell onto the field. Some of them fell on the camera well. Some, they, they were just everywhere. 
And mm. uh, the announcement came over the system. Uh, Safeco Field, you're not allowed to throw things on the field. You can be ejected from the game, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, it was uh, <laughs> probably a pretty smart marketing gimmick because it got TV time. They showed it on TV like, wow, look at all those dollars that just fell from the sky. Real money, real dollars. And uh, we'll see what happens. Illegally modified. Yes. Legal, yeah, modified. Well, it had like a post-it on it with <laughs> be, the website or yeah, something. Yeah, it'd be like, and, and who threw the money over it? The, we don't well, know. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, it was these guys. <laughs> well, the, the, all, the, or, all or they're, they're going to say is we did not condone or support this at all. Plausible deniability, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but please follow me if you want to on Twitter. And uh, please follow the network on Twitter, at Geek Gamer TV. Uh, you'll get notifications when we're live uh, shows or we're delayed like we were tonight. Uh, so please uh, follow that as well. Also like us on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. We have a subreddit that no one pays attention to. We're in many different places. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Network, And uh, we have a Twitch channel as well. Uh, follow us there as well, twitch.tv slash Gamer. You guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. For Mr. Joe Falby, John Kessler, my name is Chase Nunes. Thank you for watching. Until we all talk again, we're all silent. Say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie. Joe. What? Josh Radner. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>